Hi there, ISG. Um, this is Nobby. This is going to be the first video um, to show you how to get started with Lightwave, just so you can get you on your feet really and get you starting doing stuff. Um, right, I suppose the first thing we need to do is set a project folder. So copy and paste that template that I gave you and call it. Mm -hmm stuff that'll do we'll just call it that so it stays near the top of the list so it'll be easier to find okay and then start lightwave obviously if you was building a robot you'd call your project folder robot or something sensible like that but just for the purpose of this I'm using that name right so go to file set content directory and choose stuff as you can see it's already got the folder set up for it ready click OK that's it right whatever you do now it, when you save it all the parts all, all the things will automatically get saved into the correct folders so it keeps everything nice neat and tidy so Lightwave it's basically split up into two parts you've got the tabs along the top um, and the menus down the left hand side the tabs essentially show what menus are, are down the side so with the create tab highlighted you got all your stuff for making basic objects and making text and adding uh, plotting down points or making polygons or curves um, in the modify tab you've got things like move and rotate um, actually I don't see rotate, oh no there's rotate um, as you can see most of the important ones have got the shortcut key also showing on the button so when you first need to find move do it by finding the button in the menu and then once you start learning which key it is then you can just shortcut and you can do things like okay I need to move something I'll press T and I'll finish moving so I'll press T again to turn it off I need to rotate something I'll press Y I rotated it I'll turn it off again and you just get used to it um, multiply is for adding extra to what you've already got so to speak um, so say you have a box it's got six sides um, you select just the top polygon and you choose bevel which is currently not highlighted because we haven't got any polygons on the screen if you can't use a tool it won't be highlighted so you can't accidentally go doing wrong things that much um, but you choose bevel and what that will do is it pretty much what it says um, it will round the edge off slightly the way it does that is by making it go up or down a little bit and making it come in or out a little bit um, so it's quite handy you have thicken which if you put it if you have a strip of polygons like on the edge of something and you click thicken you, you then drag the mouse a little bit and it'll essentially puff up that edge um, so you can put better edges on things um, you've got duplicate which is things like mirror uh, mirror in different directions if you only want to do it in one direction um, and a few others and then you've got subdivide now, subdivide is all to do with splitting the polygons into more than one part so you you have things um say for example you have just a flat square it's got four points four edges and one polygon um choosing the knife command which we can't at the moment and just slicing it straight down the middle of the square would split it into two polygons and there's now one two three four five six seven eight points um, 
you also get things like Bandsaw Pro which allows you to put a cut around many polygons but in an exact position um, I'll show you them sort of things later um, then you also have things like Fracture which is generally only used when you need to animate something breaking um, what Fracture will do is whatever object you have on the screen it will literally break it into lots of little chunks or however many chunks you designate um, which is good when you load it into layout and you use at the Lightwave's fancy physics engine with it um, you can throw a rock at it and it'll shatter and it generally looks quite nice um, Right, the next tab detail um, this is where you do things like merge points or weld points together um, the difference between merge points and weld is merge points you kinda say if you are close enough to join together then join together weld you're saying okay that point and that point you will join together um, it does make it handy if you've got a detailed part and you know there's a gap and it's in there so you need to join those points together but you don't want all the others to join together so you'd use merge and it says like okay what's the maximum gap in between the points you want me to allow before I merge it and you say one millimeter so if the get if two points are further apart than one millimeter they won't join together if they're one millimeter or less apart from each other they will um, so it's very handy for joining things like one part to another um, that's stuff for po that was stuff specifically for points you can do things for edges like sp you can split edges um, polygons you can do the same for merge polygons remember I was on about how if you uh, got just a, a flat square and you cut down the middle of it using the knife you've got two polygons what you can do then is you could select both of those polygons and say merge them and they'll become one polygon again or if you selected a hundred polygons and said merge they'd all try and become one polygon but they might have many points around the edge of the polygon uh, what else? Oh, you have curves, um, which is another way you can do modeling. It's commonly known as splines. In the construct panel, you have redu uh, reduction stuff. Um, generally, you only use reduce polys plus. Um, we'll come on to that later, but essentially that's the only one you really use. Um, Boolean is using one object to affect another so for example you get a cube and you put that on layer 1 and then you make a cylinder which is essentially just a flat disk that's been stretched wide um, on layer 2 and you position it so that the tube runs directly through the middle of the box you then say subtract the tube from the box and then when you look at the box you've got a box with a hole running straight through the middle of it um, you can use it for things like that that's boolean subtract you also have boolean add where you say okay if I was to add that solid tube to the box um, it's essentially only the two ends of the the solid tube sticking out past the box get joined to the side of the box anything that would have appeared inside the box it knows it doesn't need so it doesn't put that in as well um, intersect is um, essentially the difference between layer one and layer two so again with the same example you have a cube and you have a solid uh, tube um, instead of having the two end points of the tube 
and the box you have only the piece that passes through the middle of the box is left um, it's it's all handy little ways to cut holes and add detail into things um, patch ah uh, right yeah when you use um, create you can either like I said you could either do a box or a ball and add another box to it and another ball and shape them and make an object or you can create points you put four points down and then select them and say turn that into a polygon and then put a couple more points next to it and select them and say turn that into a polygon and you make a row of polygons but you also have curves which otherwise known as splines and so you sort of draw two horizontal curves two vertical curves and then you say fill the gap in in between um, it's handy if you're building body panels for a car so for example say you was doing a wing you would do an a uh, half circle for the edge of the wheel arch maybe a wide curve up here somewhere for the top of the wing and you do a line here up near the front to, s to signify where the front of the body panel would be and a line near the back for example where the front wing meets the door um, and then you say okay patch everything in between there and it builds you that piece based on those curves um, all sounds confusing I know we will come back to it all later don't worry um, okay so that was construct uh, map tab this is all to do with things that are applied onto the objects onto the polygons rather it's nothing to do with objects it's all based on polygons and points um, you have color maps which are texture you have specular well you have color maps which are textures specular reflection bump you have weight maps which are it's a map to say it, it's like an essentially an image to say how parts of the model get affected um, if you was doing a model of a human arm and you'd want the forearm the skin on the forearm and the skin on the upper arm to not wrinkle much but you want the skin in the elbow to wrinkle a lot so what you would do is paint the weight map for the elbow more than you'd paint the weight map for the forearm and the upper arm and then when you actually do a bit when you animate it by bending it the elbow bends more um, you can use a weight map for lots of different things and lots of clever tricks um, you also have UV maps which is, a is essentially a way of unwrapping an object and being able to specifically say where part of a picture is um, which is very handy you also then get morph maps which are make an object change in some way to something else for example it could be you have a model of a head and it's as standard he looks grumpy you then create a morph map where you've actually manipulated the object slightly so it looks like he's smiling you, you save that and then you can say okay uh, when it's at 0% you only see the standard model when it's at a hundred percent it's it will blend all the way to the new shape if you do it at 50% he only half smiles it's a good way of doing facial expressions and things like that or you could use it on a model of a car where you set a morph map where when it's not applied the car doors are closed when you apply the morph map the doors are fully open and then in layout you could go in and you could say 
okay do the morph on frame naught the morph is on naught percent on frame 100 it's on 100 percent animate that and you, you you will see the door open nice and smoothly um, like I said it's, it's just for changing something from one thing to another whether it be the shape the position the rotation um, anything like that uh, s next tab setup this is all to do with creating bones so you can create a, a skeleton for a character so so if you if you have an object that's made up of several parts like a car you have the body and you have the doors and you have the wheels so you can animate those individually um, but if it's all one character say for example a human um, if you the arm is exactly the same object as the chest and the head it's all one object so you put a skeleton inside of it which affects the model and then you can say okay if I bend the forearm bone his forearm will bend that's a animated character and that's how it's done in every in every computer program in every game everything they all have a skeleton to control it um, what else do you have um, fiber effects it's for doing strands um, like your hair things like that there is another way you can do it um, a, pro a plugin called Sasquatch which is a fur and hair simulator uh, Genoma is a new addition to Lightwave um, it's a new special way of doing skeletons for characters and in the latest version of Lightwave which is this 11.6 they also released an extra add-on program which lets you, lets you hook up an Xbox Connect to your PC and use that to record your movement so like when you see in movies and people have to put on the blue suit with all the silver dots on it and they dance around essentially this is a cheap way of doing that without having to use a suit with silver dots and thirty thousand pounds worth of infrared cameras um, it's a cheap hack but it does work and you can also use it to do facial animation which is quite cool um, selection it's all the stuff to do with how you select things so you can say like select everything that's connected um, so it's any polygons that are physically joined to the polygons you've selected will also get selected uh, invert select, select loop so if you've got a ball it's made up of many rows of polygons select loop is everything in that row um, point you got stuff for selecting points stuff for selecting polygons and edges you can se select by uh, maps uh, layers this is all to do with the layers thing um, layer settings this is how to name each layer so for example if you load a model of a car into Z modeler to do a test drive mod you see the main car model and then all the all the parts listed underneath it well each of those parts aren't separate objects they're just on different layers and they're called they've been given their own names so like you call layer one in the case of a car call that the body and then you would go to layer two and call that doors and you would parent layer 2 to layer 1 so that means whatever layer 1 does layer 2 will copy it so if you move la if you move the car body forwards 10 meters and to the right 10 meters the doors will also stay in the same position so they'll as so they'll seem like they're still attached to the car even though essentially they're also moving themselves um, so that's quite handy it's not just handy it's essential <laughs> Um, view tab is just for doing very lo looking um, the two most important keys that you'll use to do with view 
are actually is four. You have A, which is fit all. Um, whatever's on the screen. So if it's two layers or ten layers, whatever's on the screen, it will fit all of it within every viewport. Um, and you also have Shift A, which is fit selected, which is if you've got a ten meter across model and you select a few points in the middle and you do fit selected it'll only show it will zoom in close enough so all those polygons just fit all, all those selected points or polygons fit on the screen um, the other two uh, other two important ones are full stop and comma which are zoom in and zoom out there you go if you look down here in the numerical section at the moment each one of those squares is one meter and I can prove that if we sit in the center you move up and across there you go one meter if we zoom out a few times we got there we go that'll do so we got north north and that's now 10 meters because the grid is set to 10 meters uh, input output that's mainly for importing and exporting while it does have uh, import and export for OBJ personally I would never import an OBJ directly into Lightwave even though it can um, there's certain things that it doesn't like about OBJ files and it, it does things like it'll load it in and it won't display the textures automatically but if you use another program to convert it from OBJ to a lightweight file and then load it in it loads in fine it will read the textures perfectly it's just lightwave doesn't like reading OBJs directly um, so that's just something to be um, aware of um, and utilities is just to do with um, Plugins, L scripts is a programming well L scripts rather is a programming language um, to make plugins or commands. You've also got Python, so if you know how to program in Python, you can make your own plugins or commands. And you've also got a l big list of commands which are down the side. Um, a lot of them are the same as appear in the menus because a, a lot of it's all just little plugins and commands and they just assign it a button and put it in the menu um, so you got like some of your export um, you got select it's, it's all sorts so that's that um, over here you've got your names of your objects so if you have more than one as exa as an example I'll create some now uh, shift n uh, shift n again so I've created two new ones so you could be on that uh, you could be on the first object on layer 2 you could be on the second object on layer 7 the third object on page 6 layer 5 and it just means you can work on many different objects at the same time obviously you can't view object 1 and object 2 at the same time but you can view multiple layers um, as an example click on layer 1 hold shift click on layer 2 layer 4 and layer 6 and click on the background for that one hold shift and click on the background for that one so anything that was on layers 1, 2, 4 and 6 would all be displayed in white and anything that's on layers 8 and 9 would appear in the background in black ok uh, some other bits to be wary of is along the bottom um, you got the numeric panel there which if you have nothing selected it just shows you where you are um, obviously this is the back view so you only have left and right uh, x axis and y axis if you move to the top view you only have x axis and z axis 
um, if you want to change any of the, any of the views you can click in the little tab and change it it's naturally on white they're all on wireframe apart from this one which is perspective view um, but you can have colored wireframe so whatever base surface color you have for that part of the object that's the color it'll appear as hidden line which doesn't show the line it's a wireframe but it doesn't show the lines behind other things um, sketch kind of the same thing but it fills in the parts in between uh, flat shaded smooth shaded uh, weight shaded so when you use weight maps you can actually see it as you paint it onto the object um, textured and textured with wireframe and if you want to change each one to be a different view you can um, if you want to move around the view you can use that one and just hold left mouse button um, or you can zoom in that way and in your perspective view you also have rotate um, also in all the views you have that little square that just means full screen that one so you could do it with your perspective it's quite handy um, you also have your point polygon edge and volume selection modes um, point polygon and edge are literally you draw you move over the points or the polygons or the edges and it selects them um, left mouse is normal select right mouse button is loop um, shift and left mouse button or right mouse button is add to the selection control is remo remove from the selection so you could do um, a, you have a bunch of polygons you select a few using the lasso which is right mouse button um, but you realize you've selected a few too many so you can then hold control and do right mouse button and remove a few from there um, polygons works exactly the same except it's for whole polygons um, in the three wireframe views you can't click directly on a polygon because you're not seeing polygons you're just seeing the wireframe of the polygons because it's wireframe view so what you actually have to do is click on the line in between two polygons you, ha you have to pass over an edge um, which means that some quite often you'll also pick the polygon next to it so you then have to go along and remove that one um, but in the perspective view if you're showing it in textured or flat shaded one that actually shows the filled in object rather than the wireframe then you can click directly on polygons and select them uh, two other things to be oh, oh sorry um, edge mode is the same it's the lines in between two points if you pass over one of them or loop around a section of them you'll select them volume works a little bit differently what you do is you draw a box say in your X and Y view and then you do the size in another view or in that view and basically anything within that 3D space is considered selected um, so if you then press move anything that was in that box would all get moved but everything outside would stay where it is uh, okay if you don't have a tool selected it's so if you haven't got like move or rotate selected or create box selected and you click either in here in the edges of here or up here it will deselect everything that's it won't do any harm to the model it will just deselect um, it's a handy way of quickly drop in a selection um, when you've done editing something you usually say you, you'd got some polygons selected you press T you move them a bit you press T and just click off the side of the screen and it deselects it again um, 
to Windows to be very wary, well not wary, but to take note of is numeric. Um, that is basically the properties for almost everything. If you call up a box, or better yet, if you call up a if you create a ball and you drag it out so you got your width and you drag it out so you got your height now you can see that's made up of two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen four degrees six, 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 six. all right we'll delete uh, deselect them um so it's made up of twenty four sides around um, so if that's no good what you do you call up the ball you drag out your size and then you press either press N for numeric or click the numeric button and it comes w up with the numeric information for the ball so you could say ok I want 48 sides press tab and it gives it 48 sides I want it to have six segments so it has six segments or I want it to have 26 segments um, you can say where its center point is now as you can see in this view and this one the orange center X is actually just below the black line which is absolute center and that is represented here it's minus 79 millimeters below the surface so you can change that to naught and you know that it's always sat dead in the center and as you can see our radius in the different directions don't match and that's why it's a funny egg shape but you could do 2.5 meters 2.5 meters 2.5 meters and you know it's perfectly round um, incidentally that's the first object <laughs> create a ball when you finish making the shape you can either close the numeric I nearly always just close the numeric panel and then turn off the tool um, if you don't turn it off and you just click on the side there you haven't actually completed it so it will just remove it um, but yeah, there's the first object. I'll press the Del key to delete it so we can start from afresh. Um, one other window to be wary to be take note to take note of is the statistics panel. Um, that can be found in Windows, I think. Yes, statistics open and close. Or you can press the W key. W and N are two keys that you really do remember a lot of. Statistics shows you stuff about the current layers that are on the screen. So it will tell you how many points, um, it will tell you how many polygons. See now that's silly. Um, I've only just noticed that actually. We work in points, polygons and edge mode. but vertex are points vertices are polygons and it's referring so lightwave uses both points and polygons and vertex and vertices to describe things that's very strange and I've never noticed it before but anyway I digress um, we'll do a ball and we'll do a ball and we'll turn it off and we'll just select them and press delete we don't need them what I'm interested in is just showing you the top view so we'll press A to fit all now if you look all of these polygons are one two three four point polygons and the next one is also one two three four and one two three four they're all made up of four point polygons but these ones aren't because the point in the middle is all joint is 
all join together. It's all shared. That one point is shared by all these polygons. So these are three point polygons, which if you zoom in even more, you can see it's one, two, three. Now that is reflected in uh, the statistics. If you have a look, currently we have 534 faces, which again is the same as polygons. Um, we have 486 four point polygons, and we have 48 three point polygons. If you need to select all the three point polygons, you click the little plus next to it. Or if you don't need to, you can minus them. If you need all the four point polygons, click the plus, click the minus to des deselect them. Now, if we had something silly like we select them edges and them edges. Now, their edges in the middle are still there. So when we delete that, it's going to give us some odd results. It claims that's one whole polygon. It's, I didn't expect it to work smoothly, but I wasn't sure it was going to do that. OK. But we can see that is, if we have a look, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 point polygon. But it's the own. Uh, no, it's not the only one. Um, there's that one, and there's also that one, which has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think, points. So it says we have more than four point polygons, two of them. So if you've got like a two point polygon or a one point polygon, which is essentially a single point that's been turned into a polygon, which is very bad. It can make geometry look like it's got a sharp edge when it shouldn't. Um, you can select them and cut or delete and it will get rid of them. Um, if you have an object with more than one surface, so say for example, give that one a surface and we give the opposite a different surface. We click on the surface one, you can see it tells us surface one has 220 and surface two has 301. But we need to select all the polygons for surface one. So there you go. That's very handy, especially for things like cars, because you can say, okay, select all of the material that is called car paint or car body and you'll select all of that and you you can assign new materials to it or if you need to modify just the body and it doesn't affect the inside um, you can cut the entire body away dump it onto a new layer paste it back down and you can put the other one in the background like that um, and you can just work on this bit modify it slightly like that and then you can copy it back and paste and we'll do merge to join the two halves together again so it is actually uh, yeah but we still have two surfaces and they can both still be selected right okay so that's all the boring shit out of the way. That's essentially just showing you the what it looks like. So I'll just pause the video for a second so I can go to the toilet and get a cup of coffee. Not from the same place. That's horrible. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll actually show you some stuff. Okay, we're back. I'll start from scratch. Um, load a clean copy of Lightwave. We don't need to worry about setting the content directory it remembers the last one it was set to so in our case it's still the stuff folder. Okay I will show you how to make a car. It will be a very shit car but it will be a car. Um, 
if you think about it, essentially a car is just a funny box shape. So we'll start with a funny box. Um, if we'll zoom out a little bit, just so our grid's on one meter, um, we'll make it kind of to scale. So we're going to be about two meters to the front, and about two meters to the back. That's about four meters. So that's for twelve foot. Um, Make it two meters wide. We'll turn it slightly so we can see the view. Now, plus Z is forwards, which is that direction. Um, so we'll now call up the numeric panel because we want some information about this. Um, we want to come down to segments. I want to split the car into three, split that box into three parts along its length, which is the z-axis. So we'll do that, and then we can close the numeric panel. And right, so now we select the polygon selection mode. Um, we'll zoom in so we can see it. We want to select the middle polygon. Now here's where we use a fancy tool. Multiply bevel. Now we're not going to use, you can use the numeric panel for this if you want precise numbers but we're not bothering about precise numbers for the moment. Um, what we're going to do is left, hold the left mouse button, push up, oh, if you push up or down it makes it go further away in either direction and if you do left or right it goes bigger or smaller so if we move it up a little bit and move it in a little bit yeah about that, that looks okay we can press B or hit the bevel button to turn it off and we're back to normal polygon selection and we just click it again to undo. Sorry that was something I forgot to mention. While shift and control are add to and remove from the selection, if you just select a few polygons by moving over them with the left mouse button and then you move over them again with the left mouse button, you'll deselect them. And it's the same with the lasso. If you lasso some polygons and then you lasso some polygons it'll undo the selection. Okay back to the car. Uh, this is the front of the car. So what we'll do is we'll select those points because we've done it from a side view it selected both of those points across the top. If you'd have done it from the top because you've got two polygon two points there you'd select both of them. Well, we'll do it from the side view because we actually want both of them. And we'll do move, which is T, and then bring it down a little bit. Deselect it. Switch back to polygon. Go from the front so it selects the front one, and then deselect the two side ones so you've only got the front one selected. Do T for move. Move it forwards a little bit more. Then we want the the base of the roof is too small, or what will be where the windows join is too small. So if we select those ones and those ones, and do T. Now, if when we move, we look in the numeric panel down in the bottom left corner, you can see exactly how much you move. So we'll move it by 200 millimeters that'll work. So if you needed to move the, we will move these back ones as well, but if we needed to move it exactly the same amount you know we moved it 200 millimeters forwards so we could move that one 200 millimeters minus and it would be the same distance but we're not going to do it 200 millimeters. I'm going to hold control when I move to guarantee that it only moves 
in the Z direction. Um, that'll do, that's about there. So we press T to turn off the move tool and then deselect the polygons. So it kind of looks car box shaped. Um, it's not perfect, but it kind of looks car box shaped. Right, what we can do now is we'll give that a surface and this will show you how surface works so you could either go to is it set up note detail see that's the thing I'm so used to using the shortcut keys for these I don't know where it is in the menu it's Q press Q and it will change surface so we'll call that body we will want this to be the new default because when you start as always you always have to have a default surface which is that grey colour it doesn't have smoothing turned on or specular or anything like that it's just grey and you can see it so we'll tell it to add this new one will be the default um, click in the colour box and we'll set whatever colour we want um, we'll have it in the reds down here somewhere that'll be okay and we want it to be smooth we want it to show smoothing okay now it looks a little bit funky because this is a 90 degree edge but that one and that one are not and the reason for that is if we call up the surface editor which is always there it doesn't matter which tab you select um, this sm first group of menu items will always be there they appear on every menu um, so call up surface editor which normally is either click the button or F5 oh it was on the, my second monitor so you couldn't see it then um, okay so this shows you the color the luminosity that is how much light does it give out normally nothing gives out light unless it's an actual light so if you was modeling a hi-fi and it has a little LED on it you'd color it red or green and you'd give it luminosity which makes it light up diffuse isn't brightness although it makes it go black it's not brightness that is how much light is reflected off an object um, essentially how much light can it receive um, specularity is how bright do you want the highlight if you set it down to like 20 it's very dim if you set it to 100 it's very bright glossiness is how shiny something is so something like rubber is it it does light up to a certain expect extent it has a highlight but it's not like it has a nice shiny dot on it like something very highly polished it's because the surface of rubber is very rough it's very tiny little holes and dots on it but it is very rough so it scatters the light so it's not very shiny so you get a wide highlight but something like glass which is very smooth has quite a high glossiness level um, in reality nothing in the real world ever has a hundred percent specularity or glossiness or diffuse for that matter um, but if you want something to appear shiny you turn the specularity up and set the glossiness to what you want in our case we don't really need either and you can't have glossiness without specularity because if you don't have a highlight there's no reason to set how shiny that highlight is uh, reflection obviously how much of the world it reflects um, in real world situations nothing reflects more than about 30% unless it's a mirror and a, even a mirror doesn't reflect a hundred percent it reflects at about ninety percent 
Now reflection is directly connected to diffuse because you either have light reflecting off something which is what diffuse does, it shows you how much light is hitting an object and bouncing back into your eyes or you have how much of the actual environment is reflected in a surface. Now it always the basic rule of thumb is reflection and diffuse always add up to 100%. So if you have something like a glazed vase that you put flowers in and it's on your window ledge when, when you look in it you can see a reflection but are you actually seeing the reflection of trees and things like that or are you seeing the reflection of the light from the sky and the trees appear as a silhouette so essentially if, like in cartoons when you want to draw a reflection in an eye you always draw like a couple of white squares or a couple of white circles to simulate a light reflecting in it that's diffuse reflection is actually seeing objects um, so if you have something that is 90% reflective like a mirror you would only have 10% diffuse if you had something like car paint which is very smooth and quite shiny and reflective but it's nothing like a mirror it's not like chrome so it would actually be about 35 to 40 percent at best so if you're using 35 percent reflectivity you want diffuse on 65 I hope my maths are correct but for the moment we're not going to use reflection reflectivity either we're just doing this transparency is how transparent something is obviously uh, refraction index that only kicks in if you use transparency because refraction is how much does th how much does the view get bent through an object it's to do with you know putting the straw in the glass of water and the straw looks broken that how much does that effect happen so if something's slightly transparent or 45 percent transparent refraction index of one is like looking through a flat sheet of glass it doesn't get bent at all um, a glass of water or a solid glass ball um, is 1.6 generally things don't get refracted more than 1.6 um, so for like when I'm doing car windows I use 1.01 .01, just so it bends the light very slightly translucency is how much does light pass through things when a light is behind so for example you ha have a sheet of thin paper and you hold a candle behind it you can see light passing through the paper but how much does that light pass through that's what translucency controls bump is you can use an image or a, new, uh, a mathematical equation to actually give a flat surface fake roughness they do it in games all the time you'll have a flat brick wall you, you'll have a flat wall with a picture of bricks and an image underneath that you can't see which simulates how high or how bumpy things are and that gives the wall the effect that it actually has depth to it that's what a bump map does uh, and then you have smoothing which is turned on or off generally you don't want to go any higher than 89.5 if you go 90 degrees then it does try smoothing things which are 90 degree angles and you don't want that if you set it to 25 none of our object appears to be smoothed because that angle which is that one is greater than 25 and so is that one but we can actually find out what they are if you do it manually and turn it up you'll see in your perspective view 
it's suddenly smooth. Haha. <laughs> so that front angle is 48.5? Yeah. It's approximately 48 and a half degrees. And the one at the back. About 56 and a half degrees. Um, but generally you have it on 89.5 because if it's an, if it's anything less than that then it should really be smoothed anyway and if it's any if it's a 90 degree angle or more then it's going to be a sharp edge so we'll leave it on 89.5 okay so oh sorry one more for th one more thing uh the box that says e means envelope so it's something that can be controlled over time so for example you could say the luminosity on frame naught of the animation it's on naught percent on frame 100 it's on 100 percent and on frame 200 it's on naught percent and when you play the animation that surface will start off black or giving off no light and then it will suddenly go bright and then go back to dim again the same works for the diffuse and all the others you can even do it with the color channel so you could say at frame 1 the object is red at frame 50 the object is blue at frame 100 the object is pink and as you play the animation the object will fade from one color to the next the box mark T is for textures sorry another window off on the other screen um, here you can either say it's an image map procedural texture which is a mathematical equation but you don't have to do the maths it does it for you or you can use a gradient which can be based on distance angle all sorts of things um, there you go it can be based on the distance of the camera so you could say the color channel um, start is one it will say we want it to change between 1 and 10 meters so at naught it's red at 10 it's green and at 5 it's white and then you set it to distance to camera and what it means is when you're like what no or 0 or 1 meter away from the car the car paint will appear red as you back out to 5 meters it will change to white and as you back out to 10 meters it will change to the other color um, if you do that using incidence angle that's how you do pearlescent paint or how you do flip paint where it changes from like bright red to black um, it's all based on the angle that the angle that the camera is to the object which is essentially controlling how the light how you would see the light reflecting off it but yeah generally you have it set on image map and you'll load an image and you'll tell it how it's assigned to that surface because you can either do it with a UV map like you've seen in games which is the same as car skins for Test Drive Unlimited they're laid out in a way which is like an unwrapped version of the car um, or you can just say okay this object is having this image stuck onto it at this size um, which is another way with things that don't move like a brick wall or something like that you could just stick a picture of bricks on it and it'll be fine um, but for if that wall moved the wall would move but the picture would stay still because it's set to work from a certain position um, it's strange but you once you start messing with textures you'll find that one out really easy um, you'll f you'll see that come up very quickly but anyway so that's 
textures that's how you assign things and again you can use using uh, the texture button for luminosity and things like that um, so say you have a robot and you do a texture map for him and you paint most of it sort of chrome and his eyes red you then also make another texture which is all black apart from where his eyes are where it's white and you assign that to the luminosity channel and that means that all of the robots paint all his chrome doesn't give out light but where his eyes are that gives out light so you can use like I said you can use images rather than setting specific values so which is handy because you add two different shades of uh, two different settings of giving out light um, on the same surface there were some parts that didn't give out light there were some parts that do give out light but you only had one luminosity setting so it's very handy for that um, anyway so we'll close that for the second okay um, so there's our basic car doesn't look much like a car just yet so what we will do is if we select in fact if we select across all four of them it's only the four sides of that bit it's not the actual roof there what we will do is press Q to make a new surface and type rubber we don't want this to be the default material and make it very dark grey click OK and then we press B to bevel and we don't actually want to move it up or down because we don't want this to extend or contract into the model if we just do left a little bit it pulls each one in um, it's actually doing it by 50 millimeters because we're at depending what zoom level you're at it will affect it by a certain amount if you zoom down to 10 meters and you move a little bit it'll actually move like a meter if you're zoomed in where your grid is on 100 millimeters and you move a little bit it'll only move a couple of millimeters um, but right so we pressed B and we beveled in a little bit press B to turn it off again press Q to create another surface and type glass and then this one give it that sort of colour press OK and press OK deselect everything and then you go very basic car shape already so yeah that is essentially a very basic car that you can make now, if you subtract all the shit that I was talking about the texture panel just um, creating that whole thing would take about five minutes remember it was just create a rectangle a box call up the numeric panel tell it to have three sections here along the z-axis and then we selected the top polygon here we beveled it up and in a bit to make the roof we spaced things out a little bit and then we gave it a paint texture and then we made the windows and we gave that appropriate textures and that's a basic car if you wanted to add wheels the easiest way uh, go to create go to disk now we'd do this on a different layer so it doesn't affect the first one uh, if we do it about there now it's on the y-axis it's bang on the center so that's good so we'll do it about there and have our wheel about that thick I know it's not exactly accurate but it will do uh, 
give that a surface. We'll, call, we'll give it the rubber surface that we used on the window trim. And then if we do T for move and move it approximately there. If we select all of it, press C to copy, V to paste, and in the side view we'll do move, and move it down to about there, press T to drop the tool. Now here's a good one, uh, press shift and V, or you can go to multiply uh, multiply tab, press mirror. You got this icon. Now, if you do it straight down the middle on the Y axis, it'll mirror the opposite side. If you do it on the X axis, it would mirror it top to bottom. Or you could call up the numeric panel, and it's automatically set on the X axis, so it mirrors it exactly which is good so we can close that window and shift V again to turn that off and straight away that's mirrored the front and back wheels over to the other side so we now got four and we could then cut and paste them to that one and make it a print A so we can see all of it um, what do we want? oh yes, centre Real? Uh, no, that's not the one we want no, who's nicked it? Oh, a line. That's what we, we actually want a liner. It's F2. This is the important one. You can set is everything on the centre? Um, or totally ignore what happens on the X axis, the Y axis, or the Z axis. Um, do you want it sat directly above or below the centre line? Um, so in this case I want to make this car sit on the ground which means we'd need it to go up a little bit so what we will do, we don't want it to uh, centre left or right because it is centred already and we don't want it centre, we don't need to centre it in the Z axis because we know it's centred there already so we'll leave them centred or you can turn them off but we want it to be just on the plus side of centre and when we click OK, boom, there we go, sat on the centre line. Sat, so you know that is perfectly on the ground. And that is your very first object. So you could save that if you like. You press S for save. Car. Return. <coughs> OK. Uh, we'll do Shift and N to make a new object. Uh, what can we make now? A coffee mug. There we go. That's fairly easy to make. Um, right. Actually, I'm going to pause the video, have another swig of my coffee because it's slowly going cold. Okay, I'm back. Um, what was we going to do? Oh yeah, model a coffee mug. Okay, uh, we've still got the other model in the background, that doesn't matter. Um, so what shape is a coffee mug? Essentially it's just a cylinder um, that's hollowed out in the middle. So that's how we'll make it. size. Uh, that looks about right, no, maybe a bit smaller. Yeah, about that for a coffee mug. Uh, I call up the numeric panel. We'll give it 36 sides. Now we need it to actually have... Actually, no we don't. We could do it one or two ways. We could either give it some sections like that or we could just put a few cuts in 
so we've got something to build the handle off. Um, I'll, d I'll do it with sections so at least you can see the numeric tool in action again. Uh, yeah, about that many, that'll work. Okay, so if we give that a new surface, Q, um, now it's remembering this because that was the last surface that we had selected um, or rather it's the default surface that we had last selected um, it thinks that's the new one but don't worry about it just change the name we'll call it mug um, this will be the default surface for this object um, and we'll give it a color we want it to be white and we want it to be smooth. So we'll say OK. So that's our basic shape. Then what we will do is select the top polygon, move the view up a little bit. Then we will press, where is it? Uh, bevel, our good old friend Bevel again. We're going to go up a little bit. In a little bit. If you look in the numeric box while I'm still holding the left mouse button, it says I'm in 20 meters and I'm up 20 meters. So we'll let go, press B to turn off the tool, B to turn it back on again, click, just come in a little bit, uh, yeah, about that, but 20 millimeters again, turn it off, turn it back on again, come in another 20 millimeters but come down 20 milli millimeters as well and that gives us the lip on the edge because the edge of a cup is never perfectly flat it's always got a slightly rounded edge and then if we turn off bevel again and turn it back on again because each time it's classed as a new bevel command if you don't turn it off in between it's still the same command what I mean is I'm going to bevel this down and in a little bit. If I let go of the mouse button and I click it again, it carries on from where it was. So y each time you need to do a new bevel, you need to turn it off and then back on again. Um, but essentially, this can go down to about there, turn off and back on again. want to bevel down because this is beveling the inside of the cup uh, bevel it down to about there then what we'll do we'll bevel it in a tiny bit and oh, that's a bit much down by 40 in by 20 and then down by 20 and in by 40 so that gives us a nice rounded edge on the inside we'll do the same for the bottom so select the bottom polygon and we'll do in by 20 oh went the wrong way down by 20 by 20 and in by about 60 okay so that's give us the start of a round mug as you can see although it's only slight the shading is already trying to curve around this edge which is this row of polygons essentially um, because it's nearly set on 90 degrees so but it's not good enough so what we will do now uh, that one will do select that polygon and that polygon ok and then press B to bevel and go up a 
little bit so it pushes it out and actually we'll turn off bevel but we won't deselect we'll deselect the bot no we won't oh, poo. undo redo there we go that's good um, we'll choose edge selection instead and we will select that edge which is the underside of that one hold shift and select that edge which is the top edge of that one then if we hold shift A is that zoom selected which it has what I want to do is just adjust them because if you notice the polygons are quite tall so that's going to give us quite a thick handle which I don't particularly want um, so it's going to be about there that's roughly where the middle is Let's stretch it up a bit yeah about 125 that'll work so like drop the selection go back to polygon because we didn't deselect them polygons when we changed mode it still remembers them uh, if we press B again for bevel and just oh, just bevel out a bit about there that looks good bevel again now what we want to do is roughly bevel out the same amount of thickness as that is and you'll see why about there so that looks like a square essentially it's same width and same length and then if we deselect that and we select that bottom one and that top one then we do bevel and we get them as close as we can and while those two polygons are still selected press delete because if that's all going to be one whole part you wouldn't have any flat sheets in the middle is there's nothing there then what we're going to do to make sure that those are joined up because quite clearly they're not you can see in that view there's a slight gap if we zoom in it is quite significant so what we will do while all those points are selected choose H which is stretch hold control and and bring this minimize the size minus the size bring it down to 0% which means on a they're all sat on exactly the same level and then if we zoom out a little bit and press M for merge you can either do it um, fixed which is anything within a certain distance in this case it's anything within one millimeter or you can do it automatic which essentially is they have to be on the same place now we know that they're all in the same place because we brought it down to zero percent um, but even as it was with that slight gap um, it was probably like about two millimeters gap between the two and the space between that point and that point is more than two millimeters so they wouldn't join to each other but the gap in between those two was less than two millimeters so they would so this would do exactly the same thing either way but I'll set it on automatic because I know they're together and four points were removed because it only needs four not eight and when you zoom out that's a very basic coffee mug um, now oh, I'll just drop 
the stretch tool so it will don't accidentally modify anything it well it does look like a coffee mug and it's all present and correct um, it doesn't look very smooth so I will show you a neat trick um, earlier on I mentioned I can't find what I mentioned subdivide which is essentially splitting the polygons in some way um, one way you can do it is where's it gone where's it gone um, oh yeah the standard ah oh, ok um, yeah you have a s sorry I was distracted for a second if you was to press the tab key this happened yeah it just ignore that it's complaining because we've got a polygon that has more than four points which is the two polygons for the inside of the mug there and the underside of the mug it's a circle which is only one polygon but it has lots of points around the outside but if you see it's rounded everything off and it smooths everything out and what I'll actually do now is freeze it by pressing Control D and it has physically given us more polygons sorry I'm going to cough excuse me <coughs> um, the only reason it gave us an error is because that polygon that polygon have more than five have more than four points but generally with anything that's modeled it would work quite well um, what it actually does I'll show you on another object so it's easier um, create we'll make a box that'll do um, when it comes to doing the segments, like how many polygons across or how many polygons up you have, you can use the arrow keys to set that up or down or left or right. So in this view, to get one, two, three, if you wanted to increase that up to five, you press up or down. If you want to split it left to right, you press right or left. In this view, uh, yeah, in this view, it will split it that way or that way. Notice it's not splitting across that because we're going from a different direction. And if you do it from this way, it'll split there and split there. So you don't have to go to the numerical panel. You can do everything directly from here. But anyway, we want it without any extra segments so we have a box now if we was to press the tab key again that's not a box that's a very round thing and if we was to freeze it that's what it actually looks like um, if we undo that and undo that if we go back to what was it? subdivide yes yeah, subdivide it will work now because we haven't got any five point polygons if you just do faceted and click OK that's what it does it splits each polygon horizontally and vertically so we have actually got one two three four one two three four polygons on there um, if we undo that if we do subdivide again and you do it by metaphor and do metaform what it'll actually do is the same thing but it will average out any corners so it'll put a line through there and a line through there but it'll bring that corner in a little bit like that um, but what you can do is with Lightwave if you press tab and it does that that gives you a false 
effect of higher detail but it's actually still using the same amount of polygons one two three four five six you can see that's each polygon is selected but it looks like there's more um, <coughs> you can save the model like that um, with the subdivision still active and it will load into layout and it will still look like the higher detailed thing even though it's a lower detail um, so it's a if you have a lot of objects in your scene and they need to you need them to look smooth or you need them to look rounder than they actually are but that will take up too much space if they are all polygons you can cheat this way um, and in layout you can actually say what level of that smoothness there is so this is quite basic a quite basic level of smoothness just purely because it's for a preview effect um, but in layout you can turn that up and it will look even smoother so it will look even rounder so that's what subdivide does um, but we can delete that we don't need that layer anymore so yeah essentially that is your coffee mug it was finished a few minutes ago the rest was just chat again I apologize for that um, so we'll save that just press S if you want to give it if it if you was using a different model and you've altered it and you want to give it a different name then you can press shift S or if you want to save incrementals so if you was we just started working on this mug and you first save the model as a rough low res copy you can then work on it a bit more make it a bit more high res and then save it as an incremental and it will save it as like mug 002 and then if you save incremental again it will save another copy as mug 003 so you can have all your different save points and it will be the same name just with a number after it um, you can also save individual layers as objects so say we'd got layer 1, layer 3 and layer 5 highly highlighted when you save when you hit save layers it will just save them and then you could select the opposite layers and save those parts as an object but for this we just need save so we'll do mug right so that's essentially our mug uh, we'll go onto a new layer or rather sorry a new object which is shift n just so you know oh sorry I'm pressing buttons what I actually done was I created another new model after that as well just and so I closed it and it always reverts back to the top object in the list um, something I will show you as well um, if you call up the surfaces editor we've got two sets of surfaces one for each object now as I said before because body was the default on the last one when we made the new object it remembered them settings so it thought that was our default um, once you close the object and load it back again things like that default which is no longer the default because body is and in fact this surface is not used anywhere you can see there it says polygons none like body polygons there's 14 polygons use body there's 4 polygons use glass and holy shit there's 120 polygons use rubber in mug no polygons use body because that was the default but we created a new material called mug which used all of them and that mug you, is made up of 5,780 polygons. Um, but it doesn't look bad. If I wasn't talking so much, it would have been made in about five minutes, which isn't too bad. Okay, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna go back and show you a few extra little tools and things that you can use which will 
help finesse hopefully um, first of all things like so we got a basic shape there and if we select all connected um, if we was to smooth that obviously, oh, that looks a bit weird because <laughs> obviously it just tries to average between there and there so we could do with adding a few more polygons so we'll try it doing faceted which doubles everything up then we'll try metaform and see what that looks like yeah still not great so we'll undo that and undo that the first thing we could do is just split the car four ways so to do that we'll use knife and if you start at the top and drag it down what that does it cuts through any polygons um, that are directly in the path of that line so in this case we're only cutting t uh, top to bottom so it doesn't matter how far forwards or back it goes it will always affect it um, so that splits it down the middle and then if we split it that way or that way which is the same thing just from another view um, knife or shift K and just drag it along and it cuts all the way across and it does it from top to bottom So shift K to turn that off um, then we can do things like select those two points and move them forwards a little bit deselect the bottom one and maybe move that one move that one actually no we'll do it the other way so it's undo undo redo so it puts it back but leaves them selected we'll deselect the top one and move the bottom one out slightly that's a little better okay um what else can we do oh yeah you could use the knife again if you wanted now you don't have to do straight lines like top to bottom left to right you can do diagonals and anything that passes through will get cut so you could do things like actually no I don't want that, I'll undo that I select polygons undo that I'm going to move the wheels to another layer so I select just selected a few polygons on each and then done select connected cut switch to a new layer paste and switch back to that one and put the wheels in the background I will put a cut across there then select those polygons oh that looks a bit weird but you you get the idea maybe move them ones up a touch and then maybe move that back a little bit oh that's even more fucked up than it should be <laughs> ok what we can do is if we deselect that select knife again and we do a cut across there then what we need to do is select those two points and those two points well actually it's six points um, roughly one of those boxes is nearly a hundred millimeters well one of those boxes is a hundred millimeters so the gap between those the height is just slightly less than hundred millimeters so if we do merge points fixed and set it to 100 millimeters we know anything in that will get merged and obviously the gap 
in between those is more than 100 millimeters, so they won't get affected. That merges them to there. And it does always go by whichever ones you merge in the order that you merge them. So it's like if you select them first and then them, when you merge it, those ones will merge to those. If you do it the other way, those ones will merge to those. Um, I'll deselect that. Right, now one thing to be wary, you can actually see it in the model already, that line. Now there was a polygon in there and we essentially just squashed it down to infinity because we've joined those points together. So if we call up the statistics panel, which was W, and we have a look, we now have two two-point polygons, which is going to be the two lines across there, there, and there. I bet. Yep, there they are. Now, as the points from that polygon and that polygon are already joined anyway, we can delete the two-point polygon and it won't affect the model. If you were to say select that polygon and cut it, obviously it affects it because there's nothing else there. But oh, that was what I actually done there was cut and paste, um, which now oddly enough, if we do sl uh, select by connected and then invert it so you can see that's the only polygon that's not selected because it's no longer merged with the object um, so what you do is select those few polygons now there is one two three points of contact so that's going to be that's going to be quite a few points I think but we'll do merge and we can do automatic because we know that those three places where that polygon touches others it's all in exactly the same place. So we do merge, three points removed, and now that is all part of the same mesh. So that's how you join one part to another. Um, right, so we'll now go back to points, select them, move them up a little bit, maybe. That kind of looks carish. Um, if we select those two, now the problem is bevel. We could, if we wanted to make a grill, we could just bevel that in a bit. Um, but it'll bevel each polygon, so that one would move out a little bit and move in like squash in a little bit and that one would as well so those two polygons would actually separate I'll, sh I'll show you anyway uh, see I'll do it again even just doing forwards with no expand because it it doesn't bevel in a direction that you tell it, it bevels directly out. So if a polygon is pointing 45 degrees and you bevel it, it will bevel out at 45 degrees. If it's pointing at 0 degrees, it will... Pardon me, I've got hiccups. Um, if you bevel out at 0 degrees, it will bevel out at 0 de If the polygon's facing 0 degrees, sorry, it will bevel out at 0 degrees. So we can't use bevel in this case. What we can use is something called smooth shift, which is there, and it's shift F, and it does very similar. It's like uh, an extrude. So we've got smooth shift select uh, turned on. We click in a view, and I don't know if you noticed then, but you watch this model. I've just undone it so you can see it again. When I click, it does that. The reason it's done that is because we've now created another set of two polygons that are in exactly the same place, so it messes up with the smoothing angle. But what we actually done, we created two new polygons, and if we just do move, you can see we've actually created them. So what you can use that for, I've just undone it completely again, so 
Shift F for smooth smooth shift. Click, and then if we choose stretch, which is H, we come down a little bit, and then a little bit. and we call it grill we don't want it to be a default and we want it to be a light grey because we're going to pretend it's going to be metal so if we turn off sh uh, stretch deselect that and so you've kind of got yourself a grill okay now if we do something no oh didn't want that shift a um actually if we split the nose of the car a little bit as well that might help and if we split it from there about there. Now I know that when we cut that with a knife it wasn't exactly where those polygons were. So we will have to go in and manually fix that. So what we'll do is yeah the line actually missed slightly there. So what we'll do uh, it's a grid of 200 micrometers so that's one hundredth of a millimeter so that's not very much um, but we'll do merge by a fixed amount and we'll say five millimeters and that covers them but we have left ourselves with a few two point polygons again so we call up the statistics editor oh we've even got a one point polygon There's two of them on the end so we'll delete those and the two point polygons we'll delete those as well so we're only left with three or four point polygons and that should work a little bit better. Right, if we also select, come on, it's got to be a point there. There's the point. Okay, and we move that up a teeny tiny bit. No, that. I wonder why that's acting all squirrely. I don't know. Anyway add a little bit of shape to the hood of the car. Don't worry about the smoothing looking a bit funny. It really doesn't matter in this at the moment. So what does that look like if we do subdivide, which is shift D, and we just have it, ah, oh, then windows are still horrible. But the body doesn't look as fucked up. So we'll undo that, and we'll do subdivide again, but on faceted. And then we'll do subdivide on Metaform. And that looks a little bit better. It's less cranky. There is another way you can stop that. Um, essentially, if you look at it from the rear view, you still only have those points and those points. When you subdivide using Metaform, it's just going to put a line down the middle and try and smooth the angle in between. If you was to put another row of polygons, another row of points, sorry, here, it's only got to go from here to here. So it isn't as big or smooth. So you can still use the same amount of polygons, but if you just put the points somewhere else, you can often achieve better results. I'll do it the old standard way. I'll just get the knife and I'll put a cut there. And
and I'll put a cut there. I'll also I'll put a cut just below the just below the roof. Just above the door, so that's going to help square out the wind, uh, the curve between the window and the roof, and the curve between the window and the door. Um, obviously, if you can put more cuts in, it saves smoothing angles. So we could put one there, for example. If it's a flat surface, it doesn't matter because it's not going to smooth from there to there. That's flat, so it makes no difference. But going from there directly to there will give a different smoothing angle from going from there to there. Um, we'll put another one in the front as well. Would it be easier? Yeah, it's easier to do it in that view. Maybe put one across there. Whoop, make sure it's straight. And put one across there. And then what we can do if we select those points. Now what ideally what we need it actually what I'll do is not those th ones, I'll just use those ones for the moment we'll move those to there deselect them select them then what we want to do is angle them around there but if you just use rotate as the angle changes that bottom point will actually start coming up as it goes around and it will eventually go up there all we want to do is shuffle them to the side so rather than using move or rotate we use shear which is the kind of saying like skew it off to one side so we'll do it from the top now you have to be careful because sometimes you'll want to pin it at the top and move it at the bottom but it'll do it the opposite way if it does I'll show you what to do. So if we move, yeah, straight. See, it's it's moving the wrong direction. So what we do, we call. Oh, press under. There we go. Call up the numeric panel, and this is the shape of how it essentially shears it. So we're it's trying to do it that way. So if we set it to that it's going to work the opposite but what, th what that means is at the one end it doesn't do it very much at the other end it does it a lot in this case at the one end it doesn't do it much in the middle it does it a lot and at the other end it doesn't do it very much so it will make a bulge and this one is the opposite of that where it will do it a lot at the one end not do it at all in the middle do it a lot at the other end so it makes a concave shear effect but we want that one which was the opposite to what it was set on now just to make sure we're going to use the settings turn it off and back on again and then if you go and you shear that works hang on did I move that I think I moved that left or right so I'll hold control and do it just to be double sure. Yeah, if you look in the side view, the angle of that now is a lot better. It runs down in a nice line. So we'll do the same for this one as well. So I'll move that forward. If you compare the gap up there to the gap there, it's a bit of a difference. So I'll move that back a little bit. There we go. So I'll de 
select them select them now we're still going to share it by the same direction so we don't need to change the settings and we do it to that and that works very nice uh, if we zoom out a little bit actually I know what I'll do um, here's a good opportunity you can set up different displays so at the moment like we've got four windows all equal sizes but for cars that's not practical because you don't need much in the height department it's all all about the length so in the case of this view what we would do is something like that you just click on the line you can either do it on the top on the divider there the divider there or right in the middle now that's great but the, as soon as you close light wave and load it again it will ref, ref, uh, default back to the standard view so what you can do is if you hold control and you press a number on the number pad either one two three or whatever um, not naught um, but if you hold control and press one two three you're up to like nine you can set the window so what I'll do is control and two because I've already got something set to number one now it says do we just want to do a single pane which will be the last pane that we accessed which I think was this one so it will only affect that or we can set it to the whole window just set it to always set it to the whole window preset name it doesn't matter what you call it but for the sake of arguments we'll call it two okay now I've actually got the default view set as number one so like if you're there as you as the screen looks like that you could press control and one set it to whole window and call it one now if you just press no, number pad 1 or number pad 2 or whatever number you assigned one of those displays to it would go to it so if I press number pad 2 it goes to that one if I press number pad 3 I haven't got one set to that view if I press number pad 1 it goes to that view now you can't use number pad naught because that w that is the same as clicking that button there which is maximize whichever view you was currently on so in this case I'm on that view I've just clicked the mouse a couple of times if you press north it show maximizes that window if I click in this window and I press north it maximizes that one which is handy because you can maximize it like that and then press fit all and it will show you that one as best as it can um, press naught again and it will go back uh, fit all but yeah that's not a very good view for cars so we'll change to that one and when we do fit all you can see more ideally you want the object to be as large as it can be in every view um, so we could probably come down on the height a little bit more yeah and when you press fit to view it zooms in a little bit more so yeah um, you could do that and I'll just pre-save that view again whole panel preset name 2 now remember it's not the number pad button does not correspond to that name there I could call this penis if I wanted but I would still press number pad 2 to get this view because I, that's what I recorded it on when I press control and a number pad button but I'm not going to call it penis although it doesn't actually display anywhere I don't know why it even does it um, but yeah so there we go so yeah back to our view we've messed about with it a bit we've put in a few extra cuts so things like that rounded part there won't try and round from here to here it'll just try and round from here to here which is a lot smoother um, it was essentially the same as with the coffee mug 
when we put see now this view isn't very good for square objects so we could just press number pad one again and it'll zoom in for right yeah um shit what, what was I saying sorry I forgot what I was saying yeah um that little cut there is essentially the same as us as when we put the bevel on there to add the lip on it we're just putting an extra an extra row of polygons in just so it's less for the smoothen effect to try and curve around so back to our car and back to our decent view so we'll try this um, shift D for subdivide polygons and we'll try metaform ah now that's much better I'll just undo that because we put this cut here and this cut here it can't smooth over that angle so it doesn't give us crazy circular windows and because we put a cut here and here it can't curve around that part giving us crazy angles and also when we put this cut here so it can't go over there what it actually done was also put the cut in the windscreen as well so the windscreen doesn't go all round and horrible so if we instead of clicking subdivide pressing subdivide which was shift D we press the tab key see that actually looks quite decent um, which is good and then of course if you press tab which is the sub patch um, you could either leave it like that and save it so when it loads into Lightwave it looks like that but it's actually using that many polygons or when you have sub patch turned on you can press control D to freeze it which does that but equally you could do shift D for subdivide do metaform and it does that and you could do metaform again and it does that or metaform once and then press tab and then freeze it and you get even more but the curves on it are a lot nicer as you can see but we'll undo Oop. ok that's where we are, we'll deselect um, and the other one I'll do as well is a cut close to the ground now yeah, we can do it there so we don't get a crazy curve on the back you need to adjust either end you actually click the end and move it around if you want to move the whole thing you just click anywhere and drag it around but I'll put that there and I'll lower it down a bit ok then <coughs> we can do this Whoop. got a bit crazy on the select in there I think yeah right I will deselect those few and you shear you 
bend it out a little bit. Now, I'm going to cheat and I'll show you how to cheat as well. Rather than getting the other side, doing it all again, what we could do is just select all those polygons, delete them, and then press Shift V for mirror. And we could either call up the numer numeric panel for it, or just make sure we get it bang on the center line. And as you can see in the numeric box down in the bottom left, it says X is on naught. And just draw the line down, press Shift V to turn it off again, and you've got the exact mirror. Or the other thing that we could have done, I'll undo that and put it all back. Oh no. There we go. Turn symmetry on. And because the object is perfectly centered, when we do this, it selects both of them. Actually, I, I didn't. Stupid. Could have just done that. And then if you do, like, move and you move the right one, the left one, and move the opposite way or you can do that. Actually that creates quite a funky shaped car. Looks a bit angry. Fuck it, we'll go with that. Accidents often make very good die, uh, very good looking things. But anyway, shear. So we'll do that shear again. But notice how it does it on both sides because we've got symmetry turned on and the other the one side is identical as the first one it's just an exact mirror image so then we'll deselect now what does that look like subdivided uh, it's okay but that front end's a bit too round now so if we do faceted tab that looks a bit better but it's still a bit crazy like shift D faceted shift D metaform see now that's like very sharp edges but as as a as a lot of polygons in fact there are nearly 20,000 polygons in that piece of shit um, but we'll undo that, undo that, and undo that. No, we won't. We'll keep that one. And what we'll do is we'll put a cut just there, and a cut just there, and then we'll put another cut just there, and another cut just there. Yeah, that'll work. That should preserve the point on the nose because it's not, again, it's not going to smooth the angle from there to there to there. It's going to smooth the angle from there to there to there. So if we do tab, you see the nose stays a lot sharper now. Okay, uh, so we'll undo that. Shift D to subdivide, and we'll do metaform and say okay. And that gives it a nice amount of polygons, and it doesn't go too crazy. So we'll switch to our next layer, which was the tires. Um, there's two ways you could do if you wanted to make proper tires and wheels. You could either take that cylinder and bevel it in to make the tyre side wall and then bevel it in a little bit more and back and start building the wheel that way but generally it's easier like if you're doing it properly build the wheel rim first and then build 
disc like this one, I'll undo that so it's not all messed up. Yeah, what you, what you do is so I needed to select both sides of both tires. Then we'll deselect that. Symmetry still turned on. That works. You have to be careful with symmetry sometimes because if you are trying to do something like uh, stretch or rotate sometimes you forget that you've got symmetry turned on and it'll it'll move things funny so only keep symmetry on if you actually need it to be on in this case we do but what we'll do um, imagine you've made your wheel hub already so now you need to make your tire you've made a basic tube so all you do is bevel and you could bevel in a tiny bit and out a tiny bit, oh that's a tiny bit too much and turn off bevel, turn it back on bevel in uh, to the just slightly bigger than the width of your width, just slightly bigger than your wheel hub and then bevel again something like that and then what you could do if you bevel again and move them in until they meet oh they overlapped and like the coffee mug we're not going to need the f uh, polygons in the middle so we can cut them and we just need to merge them points now so if we polygon and select all of that and do merge automatic 48 points eliminated and that's how you make a tire it's literally just a disc bevel it in a little bit to give it its depth and then uh, like bevel it down and then bevel it in until they meet in the middle and delete the t two polygons to block you, block the view from being able to see all the way through. You don't actually even need that, need to do it all the way into the middle. You could, I'll zoom in and show you, you could essentially just do it to there and delete those polygons because you're going to have a wheel sat in the middle of there so you're never going to know that the tire isn't solid um, now as you've noticed or you may have noticed there is no inside because polygons are naturally only one sided it's like if you look at a sheet of metal it doesn't have one side it has a front and it has a back but this only has a front the only way you'd make it have a back is if you modelled a back um, which is essentially just a means instead of doing a very large si side wall like that you do a very thin one and then bevel the tube all the way through um, but in surfaces you do have double sided and in this case it's rubber so if we click double sided and it fake it fake shows an inside so that's quite handy but oh actually I'll redo once more to show you um, something that is quite handy if you hang on I'll change to that view ah, bloody hell ok um, I'll turn symmetry off so it's just that one there we go right now not as I've shown you knife you can do a nice cut down there or down there and down there so that eliminates the curve on the tire but what happens if you have to put a cut around there because knife 
and it works in a straight line. It's a very very nice tool called Bandsaw Pro which is in I think it's Multiply yeah it's in the same place as Knife but it's not highlighted because we haven't got any polygons selected at the moment but what I'll show you so actually I'll delete that and that so you can see so we'll select the side wall and as you can see like oh, the side wall actually dips in a little bit but say we wanted to put a bulge a very slight outward bulge so about here the midway point you select some of the polygons and you can either do select loop which is as long as they are all essentially the same line then it will select all of them and you can do bandsaw pro notice it's put a line in in fact I think it's put two in it's, don't worry that's just due to my settings but press N for numeric yeah I'd, the previous time I used bandsaw I'd got two in so don't worry I'll get rid of that one okay so that's our line it's currently set on 80% put it on 50 there you go so it draws it exactly in the middle you can either change it with a slider or you can drag it and oh okay it's not going to let me drag it I'll do it with the numbers instead so if you needed if you needed to put two lines in you could say Okay, that actually I'll do it that way. Twenty percent or ten. You can say that's ten percent, and I need to put another cut in. I'll pop it there, and now it's appeared, and I need that one to be at about there. Okay turn off band so we're not affecting it and then we select that loop and we do move outwards and so you can you can set it's a, it's another way of cutting into polygons when they're not in a straight line um, like with that with that it's a, just a straight line down the middle so that's cut uh, that's a knife but in a situation where knife won't work you can use bandsaw to go round a loop and it doesn't matter if it's an actual circle or if it's a squiggly line that goes in like a big S, S shape um, as long as it's all part of the same line of polygons it will automatically follow it and it will do the cut perfectly if you set it at 50% it will do the cut perfectly through the middle of the entire line of polygons so it's quite handy um, but yeah, I'll undo all that shite um, was that the last one? Ah, that was it okay so yeah that's just a few and we'll save that um, that's just an extra few like the knife the bevel the bandsaw they're just handy little things that you need to be able to add the extra detail in um, and y like um, like I said before with when we made the grill and you've done smooth shift you can do things like and we'll turn symmetry on for this because it'll be handy oh. huh. peculiar it's not working oh well doesn't matter. We'll select them ones and them ones. But we don't want the ones on the floor. So that's just them. And we'll make sure symmetry is turned off. If we do smooth shift, which was in, was it multiple? Yes, yeah, smooth shift, which is shift F. Click there. And then do T for move. Move it up a little bit. and do smooth shift again 
move it up a bit and you can you can just add extra detail um, so it's quite handy but right I'm gonna save that and the mug is saved I'll close that object close that object close that object now if you have a look in services there's nothing there um, file load actually we do recent so we've got the car and notice how when you load it in it shows all active layers so if we add just the back wheels on layer 2 and the front wheels on layer 6 when you load a model in fresh it will load you'd see layers 1, 2 and 6 would all be turned on um, and in surface editor notice we haven't got default anymore because as I said default wasn't used in any point during the model so it doesn't need it um, but yeah there we go I am going to call it quits on this video now because it is four o'clock in the morning um, and I've been staring at this for way too long I think my eyes are gonna catch on fire or something in a minute but yeah that's some of the basic stuff um, it'll get you at least moving a lot of it's just down to creativity and logical thinking about how models are built like I said at the start a, a car is basically a box shape that's been messed with a bit so that's what we've done we made a box and we messed with the shape of it a mug is essentially a cylinder with the top pushed in so that's what we do um, an old style telephone box um, it's essentially a rectangle so just build a long tall rectangle yeah you know it's just think carefully about how a model is built up and quite often you can at least get the rough shape of what you're looking for just using the primitive objects like box and disc and ball um, so just have a little experiment um, next time in the next video I'll, I'll try and um, work on some more tools to teach you how to do things I'll also show you the other building methods because all we done really was just use the primitives and just added extra detail to them but sometimes you don't want to work with just primitives you might want to just uh, start with splines and just build curves and patch the parts in between so I'll show you things like that um, next time so I will say goodbye and have fun.